Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at an Amazon colored party deck titled Priced Party, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring four copies of Coveted Prize, a five mana sorcery that costs one generic mana less to cast for each creature in our party, and creatures in our party include clerics, rogues, warriors, and wizards. So if we have all four creature types represented on four different creatures, we can potentially cast Coveted Prize for just a single black mana, and then we can search our library for any card put it into our hand and then shuffle, and if we have a full party, meaning all four creature types, we may cast a spell with mana value four or less from our hand without paying its mana cost, turning Coveted Prize into a very powerful tutor effect that lets us cheat on mana. And which four mana card are we typically going to search up? Well, Squad Commander happens to be a four mana card and is one of the better party payoff cards as a 3-3 core warrior that when it enters the battlefield generates a 1-1 white core warrior creature token for each creature in our party. So even on an empty board we at least make one token, but we can potentially make up to four tokens when Commander enters the battlefield. And then at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we have a full party, creatures we control get plus one plus so and gain indestructible until end of turn, enabling some very nice attacks. Then we also have a one-off copy of Toski we can potentially search up, and that also synergizes nicely with the tokens from Squad Commander, as now whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card. And then we also have a one of Binding the Old Gods as a versatile removal spell that can destroy any target non-land permanent an opponent controls on the second chapter helps us ramp. And on the final chapter, creatures we control gain Death Touch until end of turn, which can also enable some nice attacks. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we've got some additional creatures to fill out our party as quickly as possible, and some additional party payoff cards. At one mana we've got the full playset of Archpriest of Iona, which is a human cleric, has two toughness and power equal to the number of creatures in our party, so on an empty board it's going to be a one-powered creature, but can potentially get up to four power, and then at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we have a full party, target creature gets plus one plus one and gains flying until end of turn, so another nice evasive ability. Then we've got three copies of Star Pupil, not a particularly powerful card, but it is a one mana wizard for party purposes. Enters a battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it, and when it dies, we put its counters on target creature we control. And then we've got the full playset of Just Para Sentinel, which is a one mana rogue with reach and can tap alongside another untapped creature we control to add one mana of any color, so it can also help us ramp and fix our mana. Then at 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Stonework Pack Beast, a 2-1 beast that also counts as a cleric, rogue, warrior and wizard, so perfect for rounding out our party, and can also potentially filter some mana to fix our colors. And then we've got the full playset of Tajuru Paragon, a 3-2 elf that also counts as a cleric, rogue, warrior and wizard, and can also be kicked for 3 additional mana, in which case we can look at the top 6 cards of our library and reveal a creature that shares a creature type with a paragon and put it into our hand. And then full playset of Guardian Gladewalker, which is a 1-1 shapeshifter with Changeling. So this creature has every creature type, including all four party types. And when the Gladewalker enters the battlefield, we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. And also has a bit of synergy with our Star Pupil if it dies with additional counters on it. And then we've got a one-off copy of Acquisitions Expert, another rogue, that when it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals a number of cards from their hand equal to the number of creatures in our party, so up to four, but at the very least that's going to be one, unless they kill it in response. And then we can choose one of those cards, and that player has to discard that card. And then two copies of Draneth Magistrate, a 1-3 human wizard, that says opponents cannot cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. So this is an effective hate card against the adventure creatures, which the opponent won't be able to cast out of exile, but it also synergizes very nicely with Elite Spellbinder, a 3-1 human cleric with flying, that when it enters the battlefield we can look at target opponent's hand, we may exile a non-land card from it, and for as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may play it at an increased cost of 2 generic mana. But if we have a Draneth Magistrate in play, the opponent won't even be able to cast it for that additional cost, as it's a card from Exile that they won't be able to play. And then of course we've got our 4 mana payoff cards that we've already covered, and our 4 copies of Coveted Prize. 
Then going over the mana base, you'll notice a lack of the Triome, since we don't really want any tap lands in this deck, since we want to be able to curve out and complete our party as quickly as possible. So instead we've got three copies of Fabled Passage as our necessary evil mana fixing that at least comes into play untapped if it's our fourth land, alongside three basic planes, three basic force, and one basic swamp, and then all 12 pathways in our colors which will always be untapped. And then we also get to free roll Gigantha, the Wellspring, as our companion, since we don't have any double colored cards. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand's quite reasonable. Just need a few more cheap creatures to complete our party. Turn 1, also facing an interesting decision. I think I'm okay fetching a forest, skipping my turn 1 Archpriest, since that way... I'm at least guaranteed a turn to Gladewalker, and then Archpriest will be able to play pretty easily alongside another 2-drop on turn 3. Covered prize, not bad. And then... Hope to draw one of our many 2-drops. Opponent's gonna have a look. So do I show them a squad commander? Or maybe a coveted prize? Might go for Squad Commander. Scoveted Prize can potentially be a 1-mana Squad Commander. Okay. So we'll play Archpriest and hit for 2. Nightmare is unfortunate. Kills Archpriest and next turn can steal my coveted prize. Sentinel means I can play a 3 mana coveted prize. Won't have a full party but at least they won't be able to take it with Nightmare. Then green or white. Maybe go with white at this point in case we draw another Archpriest. And what do I get? So, I have Rogue. Could go for, let's say, an Elite Spellbinder. Which will give me a Cleric and is also relevant play. Yeah, Spellbinder seems fine. And then I can play Spellbinder before Commander, or Commander before Spellbinder. Thirst kills Sentinel. Binding, not really necessary right now. So it can hit for two. And then probably play Spellbinder first. To have more creature types to get more tokens. Opponent's ah, gonna flunk it. Blood on the Snow, Soul Shatter. Blood on the Snow is probably the most problematic card here. And making that too more expensive means it's very difficult for them to cast. Soul Shatter cleans up my Spellbinder, so yeah, this game's gonna drag on for a while. And hopefully we can find more high-impact cards. Probably worth it to keep land in hand. Even if I draw another land, I wouldn't be able to play Binding and put Gigantha in hand. And if they draw another Experts, we can discard land. And yeah, there's another expert. Opponent's still two lands away from casting blood on the snow. Now one land away. Hmm. So playing Gigantha is a little sketchy now. I think we just hit for three, and then... Up 
play it safe here. Bone and Trumps. If they get back Acquisitions Expert, we just discard land. Right, Flung's Commander instead. Now kick Paragon looks good. And go with Gladewalker. Sadly can't take Tosky. So Paragon can keep up the pressure. Put counter here so both can attack. I can binding killing expert or binding killing nightmare. I mean the second chapter and the third chapter of nightmare aren't really relevant if I cast the binding this turn, so might as well kill the expert and remove their only blocker to get in for more damage. And then probably don't need to play out anything since we might face the sweeper next turn. Another expert can have Sentinel. And then attack. And then if they don't cast a sweeper next turn, Gladewalker can give six damage. So probably no need to play anything else out. Keep land in hand for a reanimated expert. And yeah, if they don't have a land, we might have lethal, but if they don't draw land, they probably draw a relevant spell. Rankle stays back. Creatures gain death touch. Maybe I'm supposed to play the Gladewalker to pump my 2-2 two -two token and then hit them for 3, so we at least present lethal next turn. Yeah. And then any reason to play out my land? Probably not. Remorse can take Gigantha, but now they're dead on board. Alright, so close game. That Spellbinder taking Blood on the Snow ended up being very relevant. And even if we never got a full party, we still managed to outgrind our opponent onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Sentinel, turn one. Probably want access to the white pathway and then Sentinel can fix for black. Don't have that many black cards in the deck. Okay, now... Pupil plus Sentinel hit for one. And then next turn I might play Toski instead of Commander. We'll see. Opponents on a black green past the deck. So Necrotic Fumes is a pretty good answer for Toski, unfortunately. So I'll still be able to draw a card. Then the opponent's turn is spent on removing Toski, and then we can drop Squad Commander. If I squad commander first, we get three tokens. They may or may not remove squad commander. I think that actually works out better if the opponent's plan is to remove my four drop here. Because then Toski lets us draw quite a few cards as soon as we get to connect with all our 1 1 tokens. And there's always a chance we can complete our party making the squad commander even better. Bowden turns out such more witch instead. Alright, so I think it's still worth it to Toski and send the team. They will have a profitable block. Could also consider leaving Star Pupil back since that's important to keep our party around. 
Yeah, maybe. Opponent eats a sentinel. Can trade for a token. But instead lets us draw five cards. I'll take it. So very likely to complete our party next turn. Oh yes. We're a bit short on black mana, so we will need sentinel for that. Opponent most likely gonna exile Toski. But the damage has been done. Okay, so can go double Archpriests, Paragon, Coveted Price for one mana. Seems pretty strong. Opponent might be holding a Village Rites. And then Sentinel makes black. Tap one of our summoning sick creatures. Cast a one mana coveted price. Get another squad commander. And we should be good to go. Could also cast the Binding the Old Gods for free to kill the witch. A lot of triggers. We'll let the commander fly. And we will let Star Pupil fly. And attack with all. And yeah, according to my math, they would be dead. If they can village rights, they would have to sack a token to gain one up to 12, make an extra 1-1. One, one, but they would still be taking lethal. So this is not going to save them. All right, so a pretty impressive start here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Our hand is a bit land light, but we do have a few ways to get to a full party, assuming we can find green mana for Gladewalker. So we'll try it. Up against a turn one Swarm Shambler, and this can fetch up a forest and we'll be underway. So not sure if it's a mono green deck or maybe a green white plus one counter synergy deck. Turn two Conclave Mentor scary. So this turn, I guess we can play Magistrate as a better blocker, or I can play like a Glade Walker. I think I want to play a white card, since Pathway I'm probably going to play on black, and then I want to be able to double spell Archpriest plus one of my other two drops. Emergent Sequence will get an additional counter from the Mentor as well. So a 3-3. And a Guiding Voice on Mentor makes it a 4-4. So that's a lot of power and toughness on turn 3. Expanded Anatomy will add even more. Alright, so Archpriests into... I guess Gladewalker's fine. And where do I put the counter? If I put it on Magistrate, I can hold off the 3-3. Three, three. And then we gotta hope for a land next turn. All our lands are untapped at this point. Our opponent pumps up their forests, and it's gonna grow the Shambler instead of attacking with it. They could have attacked first, and then still potentially... Uh, Activated Chambler, Conclave Mentor attacks. Probably take it since it's pretty important that we have a full party. And then the commander is going to help us make some chum blockers as well. Archpriest flies. Alright, so we might have turned this around. Got a backup squad commander coming up. Opponent gonna stay back now. 
And we've got a backup commander in case they have any instant speed removal for him. And now we'll get double the plus one plus zero bonus. Could maybe see an instant speed fight spell. All right, inscription of abundance, killing the archpriests. So that does remove our full party status as well. So now if I were to attack, yeah, our opponent has some pretty good blocks available. So I think we'll just pass and the next turn, Pank Beast completes our party again. And we should be good to go. Mentor attacks. Probably safest to jump here. Alright, it's party time. Double triggers. And our opponent should be dead here. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, missing green mana. We do have wizard, rogue, and then third type into warrior. So we could potentially have a turn four full party, assuming we can find a green source. So I think it's worth a keep. Let's see what we're up against. Tap Trium. Alright, gonna need that green mana next turn. Can have a look at two different cards. And we see Sanctum and In Search for Greatness. So a five color Sanctum deck. I think I take one of the Sanctums. Opponent plays a turn to search, and there's our green mana right on time. We'll put the counter on the star pupil, so if it dies we at least get to move around an additional counter. And yeah, we've got a turn for party coming up, assuming no removal from our opponent. All right, it's party time. Squad commander triggers. And attack for seven. And hope the opponent doesn't have a sweeper here. Something like crippling fear or extinction events could be very effective. Opponent cycles a migration path. So extinction event would leave us just with a 2-2 star pupil. Then next turn I could play a Glade Walker, put Gigantha in hand. Would not be ideal. But we'll see. Four mana. And it's gonna be a cultivate. I don't think that's gonna let them survive here. Even if they have a spot removal spell. Alright, GG's. Turn for party, it gets the job done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a very promising hand, assuming we can find Coveted Price or Squad Commander or any of our other party payoff cards. Turn 1 Sentinel. Turn 2 Gladewalker into Spellbinder. Opponent with an adventurous impulse finds Field of Ruin. At least we've got one of each basic. And yeah, we get to curve out nicely here with the Glade Walker into Star Pupil. Also, could have gone Star Pupil into Glade Walker to put an extra counter on the pupil itself. Maybe that was slightly better here. 
But we can do so next turn with another Gladewalker if we want. Adventure awaits. Probably just going to play a Spellbinder. Well, now we could double spell. Although I am kind of curious what our opponent's working with. Alright, so it's a Skewed Swarm, a Ramp deck. Yeah, probably take the Skewed Swarm to make that more expensive. Since that's our opponent's eventual win condition. They can cultivate here. Another star pupil. Well, let's uh, keep up the pressure. Now I want to put the counter on Spellbinder as an evasive threat. So I can go pupil plus Gladewalker. Or I can go Gladewalker, tap my Sentinels so I can play Paragon as an extra high powered creature. Play it unkicked. Opponent falls to 9. And yeah, they're gonna have to deal with my Spellbinder at some point, because Skewed Swarm, even though it can go very wide, not the best at dealing with flyers. This opponent triggers Quandrix Apprentice. No shortage of lands. Great Horn, also a good combo with Skewed Swarm as they can mutate onto it. Another Pupil, not our preferred draw. So yeah, we'll just send with everyone. And our opponent's pretty much dead. If they block the three-powered creature, then they're still taking exactly nine damage. So yeah, a bit of a slow start from the opponent and the Spellbinder taking out the Skewed Swarm also pretty key. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand's a bit on the slow side with maybe a few too many two-mana creatures and no one-drops to get to our full party sooner. So I think this is a mulligan. Despite looking okay on the surface, this we can keep. And then it's a tough choice what to put on the bottom. It might be Toski and then hope to find another party payoff card. And then we have a smooth curve of creatures to complete our party early on. And hopefully we don't flood out too badly. Opponent fetches for a swamp. Black red. Elder Fang Disciple can have my planes. Gladewalker's okay. Doesn't seem very likely for me to kick Paragon, so I'll just play it now. And then next turn, if they don't make us discard, we can empty our hand. Uh, expert gonna have a look. Probably give him Pack Beast and land. Sure, because the Gladewalker can enable Paragon to attack, so that seems pretty important. Takes the Pack Beast. Alright, so we've got a full party. Now we just need to find our payoffs. So coveted prize over the top would be ideal, but I'll happily take squad commando too. Our opponent storms the sentinel, so there goes our full party for the time being. Although as soon as we play one of our uh, other creature types, the Gladewalker and Paragon will complete it, so I can cast coveted prize problem is I wouldn't be able to play anything for free. So it would be casting Coveted Prize, getting probably Squad Commando, and then hoping that I draw land next turn. Alternatively, I could hold the Coveted Prize and then hope to draw into a cheap creature we can play alongside Coveted Prize with a full party, and then for now just put my Gigantha in hand. 
which can protect me from another Elder Fang Disciple making me discard. It's gonna be a Woe Strider. Okay. So we have a lot of outs that give us a full party here. Pupil, not one of them, unfortunately. Still seems worth playing. Even though I could hold it to play around another Inquisitions expert. So I can show them Gigantha and Pupil. So yeah, we're hoping to find another cheap rogue or another two mana creature that has all creature types. Opponent runs out giant. And we're fine with the board stall here since once we find our squad commander we'll be able to attack again. Spellbinder's not bad, doesn't complete our party this turn to cast Covered Prize, but it will allow us to do so next turn. And our opponent's hand includes Valky, Double Valkyrie, Village Rites. So Village Rites is dangerous if they find an Act of Treason effect, like Claim the Firstborn to steal my creature and then sack it, but they already have a Wist Strider in play, so they can sacrifice my creature anyway. Valky cannot take Coveted Prize, so I think one of the Valkyries is probably the scariest threat, even though they have a second. And by taking the 4 mana card, it also makes it less likely that the opponent will be able to cast it with a 2 mana cost increase. So our opponent runs out Valkyrie. So we can cover the prize for squad commander. And then cast it for free. And then Archpriest, another party payoff here. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand missing green mana, so not gonna be keepable. This is a bit better. And then I might as well keep an extra Sentinel over land since I can play turn 1 Sentinel and then turn 2 2 drop plus Sentinel, which is kind of like playing a land. And just gives me an extra creature. Still missing a party payoff card as we're up against a 5 color Sanctum deck. So, Sentinel plus Gladewalker this turn. Put the counter on itself. And then I can either play Magistrate or put Gigantha in hand. I guess we'll play Manchester. That way, if we top deck a squad commander, we'll have a full party ready to go. Coveted prize would still be one creature type short. Banishing lights goes for Gladewalker. Spellbinder, good combo with Manchester. And Doomscar and Binding are the two scariest cards. Banishing Light can also answer my Spellbinder. I guess Doomscar is going to take them a few turns to cast. So Doomscar, if they foretell it, they won't be able to cast it because of Magistrate. So it's going to cost them 5 mana, which is still going to be a while. Banishing Light is a clean answer for Spellbinder. And they can't currently cast, whereas Binding, they need a specific land before they can even cast it. Now I could also take Fruitful Harvest, which 
lets them ramp into the mana to cast Doomscar. So maybe we just take the Fruitful Harvests, which is their mana fixing. And then, sure, next turn they can exile my Spellbinder, remove some pressure. But if they make the mistake of foretelling Doomscar, the Manchester will prevent them from casting it. Alright, now they can cast Binding instead. Which also ramps them into the Doomscar, potentially. We'll thin out the deck by fetching a Swamp. There's Binding, kills Manchester. Another Spellbinder can delay the Doomscar. Another Banishing Light in hand. I think I still need to take the Doomscar. Tank for two. So most likely see Banishing Light on Spellbinder again. And then we can resolve Gigantha. And yeah, we technically are presenting lethal. Opponent could tap down my creature with Sanctum of Tranquil Light. Shatter the sky over the top is unfortunate. Fetch a response to thin out the deck. Okay. Could have reversed the order here, but I would rather have an extra token with a commander. So we have lethal damage. Opponent goes for fruitful harvests. And they're one mana short of tapping with the Tranquil Light, so yeah. We managed to survive quite a few removal spells from our opponents, but we got there in the end. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Fetch either Forest or Swamp. think I'm leaning Fetch Swamp, since we have more green sources we can draw naturally. Even though I might be better off playing the Gladewalker before Acquisitions Experts to see an extra card. But we'll need Swamp for Coveted Prize as well. Opponent Black White. Could also play Magistrate, then Expert, and then Spellbinder. And then Magistrate and Spellbinder are a combo. Sure. And then I can fetch my green for my Gladewalker as well. Clarion Spirits. Okay. Now I'll probably just go for Spellbinder. Then next turn I can Gladewalker Expert and then we can cover the price for one mana. Okay, so black-white control, multiple dire tactics. At least they won't be double spelling with Clarion Spirit anytime soon. So probably make dire tactics more expensive. And no attacks. So most likely gonna see Sedgemore Witch. Spellbinder can hit them. And they won't be able to cast at Dark Tactics for as long as Magistrate is in play. Okay. So this turn, Gladewalker plus Experts. And 
and then we'll be able to take away the other dire tactics here. As we can look at four cards. Light scribe they can keep. Alright, so we managed to dismantle the opponent's hand nicely. And we've got a one mana coveted prize for squad commander coming up. Sadly, Humiliates is gonna prevent that from happening. Alright, still have three coveted prizes and four squad commanders we can top deck. And then for now we can put our Gigantha in hand as well. So almost the perfect plan here. Sadly, foiled by Humiliate at the last second. Still keeping up the pressure with Elite Spellbinder. Opponent's not casting two spells in the same turn for Clarion Spirit anytime soon. So we're still ahead, but double Senchmore Witch is scary. And there's Squad Commander. And that should seal the deal. All right, and our opponent packs it in. So yeah, we got to see our deck in action. Sadly, didn't cast as many copies of Coveted Prize as I would have liked, but uh, you can definitely see the power of a one mana tutor effect that gets our best card. It lets us easily cast multiple spells in the same turn. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.